Hello everybody, it's Gary Johnson with the Wild Institute coming to you for the June webinar. This particular month we're going to be talking about overcoming objections. I hope you enjoyed Lynn from Dr. Bankhead's office. I think she did a wonderful job in the month of May describing her process and what they do in their very successful practice when it comes to kind of setting up that, that interview and having that initial exam with the patient. So I thought she did a really, really nice job kind of showing us everything. And what I want to do now is dive down a little deeper into one of those things, in my opinion, as good as your practice is at a lot of things, something that I think all of us need to get better at, and that is being prepared to overcome objections, things that come up in the course of an, an exam when we get to the end and talk about treatment that we need to be able to deal with. So we're going to talk about a few of those things today, and I want to, I want to get into that with you. Before we do that, I just want to cover the agenda for this month. So the first thing, before we get into those objections, I want to talk about setting the initial exam up to minimize objections through becoming a trusted advisor. This is really a big deal, and I want to get into why it's a big deal. And there's not going to be a whole lot of scripting here or things I can give you to do this specifically, but I do want to walk through it when we get to this slide into terms of tone of voice, and body language and some other things that I think become very, very crucial. I had just done an, uh, an observation in a practice last month, a very successful one, with a very, very good treatment coordinator. And we talked about you know pace of, of, of conversation, the tone of voice, eye contact, and, and slowing down a little bit, and some of those kind of things. So we're going to talk, get into that as well. We're also going to talk about what I think is a critical element of setting you up for success. That's using a system every single time. So what I like to do when I sit down with a client is I like to propose an agenda, basically what it is I want to talk about, state the value to the to the to the customer, to the patient as to why that agenda is good for them, and then I want to to check and make sure they're re that 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 they accept that, that they're ready to go with that, that it makes sense. And then lastly, what I'll do there is I'll see if there's anything else they want to talk about. Keep in mind here that 80% of the talking really needs to be done by them, 20% by us. And this is one of those points at which the 20% is going on when we're kind of describing what we want to do. And then we're going to go into asking a series of questions. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Most of you already have some good questions for that already, but we're going to talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to talk about the three kind of key objections I think you need to be able to understand. I want to think about it. I need to talk to my fill-in-the-blank, my husband, my boyfriend, my wife, my vet, my grocer, my neighborhood uh, association, you name it, whatever that is there, you know, dealing with uh, overcoming this, I want to, to, uh, to talk to someone, and we'll, we'll talk about that one. And then lastly, one that I think we, we, we need to get better at, which is it's too expensive. So we're going to get into those. That's what, what our main objective is going to be as we, as we really dive into this webinar. By the way, I think most of you out there, based on my experience, as good as you are, this is an area we need to get better at. This is an area where we need to sharpen the axe and be really, really smooth. I've had a chance to sit in on some observations, and they were fine, uh, but they weren't wow factor to me. They were, they were fine. And, and, you, and I'm not saying that everybody on this call is or webinar is fine that you may not be exceptional, you very well may be. But we really need to work on sharpening this up in most practices. So let's start off with you know setting up this initial exam, becoming a trusted advisor. Anytime you go and deal with a really, really excellent consultant, whether it's a consultant for legal advice, whether it's a consultant for engineering advice, whether it's a physician, whether it's a dentist, whether it's an orthodontist, anybody out there, whether it's a, someone who's going to help you with investments, uh, anytime you, you interact with someone that's really, really an excellent consultant in any one of those disciplines, you're going to notice some, some commonalities between them. They, they use a process, which we're going to get into today, but their tone is usually very good. Their body language is usually very good. Their pace of speech usually is very smooth and calm. And so we're going to talk about that because I think it's really important. As Of course, I'm sitting here talking to you quickly. I wouldn't be doing this if I was in front of a client. I would be much more deliberate, uh, not, not slow, but deliberate. And, and I think we need to, to be careful of that when we get excited when our patient is in, 
in the room with us, the patient and the mom. So what does that mean to become a trusted advisor and what does that look like? Well, first things first, I think we have to set the situation up and set that parent and that patient at ease. And one of the best ways we can set them at ease is simply through our body language, through our tone of voice and how calm we are, you know, getting ready for that initial exam. So it could be something like, you know, they sit down and you've done your small talk it could just simply be your body language and how you're sitting. It could be your eye contact, uh, your tone. All those things are really, really important, but we've really got to get them comfortable. And I think they have to feel comfortable that, that we're there to help them, that we're not there to sell them. And, and believe it or not, a lot of that just comes off with uh, our body language, with the way our confidence sitting in the chair, the tone of voice that we use, the pace at which we speak, as you see here on this slide, I think they're all really, really critical. And so, for example, if I was sitting across from a mom before I proposed my agenda, you know, and talked about what we were going to talk about, I might make some small talk like all of you do. Hey, Mrs. Smith, thank you so much for coming in. You've made a really, really wise decision. Whether or not you decide to move forward today or not, you've made a really, really wise decision to come to Dr. XYZ. Doctor has an exceptional reputation, has done great, great things in the marketplace in terms of creating beautiful smiles. So I just wanna first compliment you on your decision to come here because I think you're going to be very impressed with Doctor's chairside manner. Now what I just did there is I, I set them at ease, I complimented them on their decision, I said whether you decide to move forward or you don't, Again, I'm not wanting them to feel pressured, and I think I want them to feel good about the decision to come here. And so I like saying something like that. So that's kind of the key as you're setting up to, to jump in. I particularly don't love a whole lot of small talk, who cares about the weather and all that other stuff. To me, we don't have a lot of time. we got to jump in and get started. And I think you can do a lot of the same rapport building in this case, talking about complimenting them on their decision to come into the office and see Dr. XYZ, in the tone of voice we use and the body language we use, we can still establish that same rapport as we would, you know, asking, you know, boring questions that nobody really honestly cares the answer to. So just think about that, okay, as you're, as you're setting up. I think you need to do that every time. I don't think you, you can do it some of the time. I think you do it all the time. It becomes part of your process. The next thing that's critical once you've, you've said something like that is for you to, to propose an agenda to the patient and the mom. They really don't know exactly where you're going to go with this meeting. So I think it's important for us to propose that agenda, explain what's going to excuse me, happen in that meeting. Then once we've done that, we're going to state the value of that agenda to them. In other words, what's in it for them for, for us to follow the agenda we want to follow? And then check for acceptance, make sure they're good with that, and find out if they want to talk about anything else. This should always be the start. Every excellent sales consultant does this. They may call it something different, but they do it. So I want to give you an example of what this looks like, okay? So right here, in bold, is the agenda component. I'm giving you the entire statement here, so I'm giving you the agenda. I'm giving you the value to the to the patient, the patient mom, and following the ag agenda. Then I'm giving you the last step, which is checking for acceptance and asking if there's anything else. So everything is listed on this page. And on each of the next few slides, we're going to highlight that piece that's at the top of the slide. For example, this particular slide is the agenda. So what you're looking at here in bold, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to explain what to expect during today's appointment ask you a few questions to better understand your goals with treatment. That's the agenda, okay? Now, you can add, uh, you know, other things to this. You can modify this. This is just an example. You, yours could say, Mrs. Jones, what's going to happen today is this meeting's going to take about 30 minutes, and in that 30 minutes, I'm going to ask you a few questions to better, better understand your treatment, expectations and goals. Doctor's going to come in and do an observation or, 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 or do an exam on Susie, make some recommendations to me. You'll hear us talking about words that may not make a whole lot of sense to you. And then at the end of that, uh, we'll have an opportunity uh, to, to go through questions. You and me, we're going to talk about things like money and things like 
options in terms of repayment, anything else that might be on your mind. We'll do all that. That way you can make an informed decision. Does that make sense to you? Now, that's different than what I have on this slide. There's, a, there's no right answer here on what to put in your agenda. But your, other than it explains to the patient what to, what to expect, it gets their permission to do so, it checks to make sure that there's not anything else that needs to be discussed. We've already set them at ease with our tone and our body language from that the, the previous slide. So whether it's what I have here or it's what I just regurgitated verbally, you got to figure out what your comfort zone is. But TCs, hear me, you've got to know this, and it's got to be something you can spit out without looking at a piece of paper. It has to feel natural. It has to be the same every single time or close to the same every single time if you want to be outstanding. If you want to wing it, you can get away with being nice and a smile. Are you going to still be successful? Yes. Are you going to be as successful as someone that follows this? Absolutely not. And this is what I'm talking about by picking up two or three patient starts a month. It's all these little subtle things. So in bold here again is the agenda. It says to the to the person what it is that's going to happen during the appointment. Okay, explains that to them. It then it does that clearly. So in this case, this says, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to explain what to expect during today's appointment. Now at that point, you may go ahead and explain, like I just did a minute ago. This is what's going to happen. A doctor's going to come in, do his exam, blah, blah, blah. I then would also like, before we get started, before a doctor comes in, I would like to ask you a few questions to better understand your goals as it relates to treatment. However you want to say this, you've got to work this out. You've got to write it down. You've got to look at it. If you want my opinion on it, email me and say, Gary, here's kind of what I'm thinking of saying. We can go through it. But I think you need to nail this part down. And I think it's something you need to go over with the doctor once you've kind of written down what you want to say. Once you've stated the agenda, once you've got this down, the next thing that you want to do is make sure that the patient understands the value of doing what it is you want to do. And so that part is called stating the value. It's that simple. And in this particular slide, as you can see, what's in bold is the value statement. And the, the trigger words here, guys, that I like to use are the words that way. That way are trigger words for you to say after that way, that triggers you to go, I need to tell them what's in it for them. You know, their favorite radio station, WIFM. So in this case, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to explain to you what to expect during today's appointment. Ask you a few questions as well to better understand your goals as it relates to treatment. That way you and your family can make an informed decision. That piece right there, the that way you and your family can make an informed decision, I would almost recommend you use that. And the reason for that is it's going to be hard to beat that as a value statement. Everybody wants to make an informed decision. There's not anybody sitting in your initial exam room saying, you know, I really don't want to make an informed decision. I was kind of wanting to just wing it and hope I'm doing the right thing. So let's not go that pathway. I mean, you're never going to have anybody say that. Everybody wants to make an informed decision. So I think this, this particular part here, I'd strongly recommend you use what I have. I think that that way you and your family can make an informed decision fits almost every single scenario. There may be a few that it doesn't fit. If you can think of some, email me and I'll try to give you a better solution. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I really strongly believe this is the best thing for you to stay, say here. Research shows us that sales consultants that propose an agenda state the value to the customer and check for acceptance have like a 20-something percent improvement and overall, I don't want to hate to use the word closing because I don't like that word, and in, in, in their overall performance when, when studied, Xerox did a big, huge study on this back in the uh, 90s, and so it was a big deal. I mean, it really, really helps set the platform that you're a professional. And again, you only have one ex chance to form a first impression. We want that person sitting across from us to think we're an expert, to think we're polished and professional, and one of the best ways to do that is through this initial process that I'm walking you through. Once you've done that, so once you've explained what you the agenda is, you've stated what the benefit to them to to the patient and their mom or dad is, which again is called the value statement, stating the value. The next thing you're going to do, two parts here. What you're going to do, you see it in bold here, 
is you're going to ask them for acceptance. There's several ways you can do that. You can say, how does that sound? Like I have here. I like how does that sound, but it's not the only one. It could be, does that make sense? Are you in agreement with that? There's several different things that you can say. To me, the easiest thing is, how does that sound? Because 99% of the time they go, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds great. So let's walk through this. So if I were to do this, I'd say, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to explain what to expect during today's appointment. I'd like to ask you some questions as part of that process. Again, by saying that, I'm getting their permission to probe, okay, to better understand your goals with treatment. That way, there's my, that tells me to get ready to make my, my value statement. You and your family can make an informed decision. How does that sound? And they're going to say, wait for them to give you an answer. 99% of the time, they say, that sounds great. Or they're going to say, yeah, that sounds good, but I really wanted to talk about. Sometimes they'll lead you into this next statement that I have here, which is, is there anything else you want to talk or about or discuss today? Sometimes they'll lead you right there. Sometimes they won't. You know, but if they do, sometimes they'll say, yeah, we had some questions about Invisalign. Or, yeah, we had some questions about, we heard about jaw surgery and really scared of it. Or, you know, we, we've heard this is expensive. Or whatever they might say there, okay? They're either going to tell you that right up front, or you're going to get them to tell you that based on this next question. So, walking through this again, Mrs. Jones, I'd like to explain what to expect during today's appointment. I'd also like to ask you some questions as part of this process so, so that I can better understand your goals as it relates to treatment. That way, you and your family can make an informed decision. How does that sound? No, that sounds good. Well, is there anything else you would want to discuss today that, that I haven't mentioned? Well, I kind of like to talk about, they may come up and say it. Most of the time, they're going to say no. Most of the time, they're going to say, nope, you've covered it. But you always want to ask that question because there could very well be something they want to discuss and you didn't ask them about it and it didn't come up in your probing process and you missed something that's really, really important in the decision-making process for them. hope that makes sense to you. So this step is critical. So, so far we've talked about setting them at ease, becoming that trusted advisor. We've talked about proposing an agenda, stating the value to the patient and the patient mom for that agenda, and then checking for acceptance. Once you've done that, you're going to go through your probing process. And some of you guys out there, I didn't put any slides in this for because every office is different. But you know, some of you will ask, you know, why are you guys considering treatment now? What's going on? Uh, why, why, why are you guys in today? I know you're, you're in to obviously see us about orthodontics, but tell me why now. What's going on with you guys? Some people say something like that. Some people go through the health history and say, hey, I want to walk through this and ask you some questions. And I think going through that health history is fine, but don't become a robot with it, okay? You just pepper in with those questions. Hey, I see here that you know, Susie's a, a little gun shy, you know, when it comes to, to, to the doctor. Is that right? Yeah, she gets a little nervous. Well, Susie, you don't have to be nervous. You know, Dr. XYZ is so friendly. You're going to love him. And, it, you know, but I can promise you that this is going to go a lot smoother than you think and just relax. And you might do something like that. But you're going to have a series of questions that you're going to ask. A couple that I always like to know. Have you been through this process before? Uh, I noticed that did Dr. Smith referred you, right? Or how did you hear about us? I like, um, tell me what's going on with Susie's smile. Why are you guys thinking about orthodontic treatment now? Uh, I like when you guys say, that and get mom to tell you and then say, Susie, well, what do you think? And, and well, what bothers you about your smile? And you guys ask the patient. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because I think most of you do a really, really good job with those questions. But just remember, our goal is calm, smooth, good body language, trusted advisor, asking key questions that are going to help you understand your potential patient and their mom or dad's goals as it relates to treatment. That's the reason you're asking the questions that you're asking. How many should you ask? I don't know. Three or four, five or six. I like three or four key questions. How'd you hear about us? You know, why have you guys been through this process before? Why are you considering treatment now? What is it that, that you, you know, really would like to change about your smile, Susie or Johnny or whatever? Those are some key questions that I like. Here's another one I think is excellent. I heard this the other day. 
other than yourself, Mrs. Smith, is there anybody else that will be involved in making this decision? And it's a great question. And they might say, yeah, you know, Susie's dad. And then you say, completely understand that. Have you and Susie's dad talked about this process at all or about the fact that you're considering orthodontics? And they're going to go, oh, absolutely. He knows. And he knows that, that this is something we really want to get done. Anyway, it arms you for one of those objections we're going to get into later, which is I want to talk to my what, you know, husband, my boyfriend, my veterinarian, my whatever. Okay. Really important to do this well. So let's say you've gone through this whole process, right? You've calmed them down. You've become a trusted advisor. You uh, stated a, a proposed an agenda, stated the value to the patient and the mom, check for acceptance. You probed really well. You asked three or four really good questions that helped arm you, arm you with doctor. Then that's a point at which you're going to say, hey, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go let doctor know we're ready. And that's a point at which you might arm doctor and say, Susie's afraid this is going to hurt. Uh, Mrs. Smith said she wants to, you know, the John is her husband is involved with the decision making process and and he knows that they're here. We're the third orthodontist they've been to. Whatever. This is a chance for you to arm doctor before doctor comes in. So all that goes on. And again, at this point, I'm hoping you guys have a digital picture frame or the computer screen flashing before and after pictures. I have practices that use proof books. And I, and I like proof books. I think proof books are good because they, they're hands-on. And for those of you that don't know, you know, a proof book, you know, might look something like this. Let's see if you can see that. It's like a book. Looks nice. It might have gold uh, lettering on it. And it's something that you direct them to when you walk out of the room. It might be something like, hey, I'm going to be right back while I'm, while I'm gone. Why don't you guys take a look at some of our before and after cases in here? I think this would be great for you to look at. And then you walk out. I've sat through an observation where they, the treatment coordinator did that. And I'm sitting listening to mom and the, and the daughter. Hey, that looks like my, my friend Josie. And she her smile looked like that when she started. And they're kind of going through it together. It's a, it's, a, it's a very good way to occupy their time and reinforce to them why they're there. So I think that's really, really a good thing to do. So let's get into this I want to think about it part. Okay. So we've done all that. We've done the initial exam. Doctor says, yep, we're going to need to do treatment here and gives he or she gives you that recommendation. And then it's time to talk about treatment with, with the patient and mom. And that point, you know, you're saying, yep, doctor thinks it's a, you know, this type of a case. And based on that, I wanted to walk you through some options as it relates to this treatment and the and, and the payment of the treatment. And they say, great. And we're going to get into this um, next month. We're going to get into how to present payment options. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that here. But let's say you go through, you present options to them, and they say, you know, here's our options. Do any of those options look like they'd fit kind of with where, where you, what you were thinking? And then the key here is and stop talking. And they're going to look at that, and they're going to say one of a couple of things. Yep, that one seems to make sense to me. Uh, let's let's do that one. Great. Then you go into the assumption close and you go right into, you know, or I say the open where you're starting the relationship. You go right into the next step of scheduling appointments and paperwork and blah, blah, blah. If they look at it and are quiet and they look back at you and say, oh, man, I, what, wow, or, man, you know, okay, that, I really want to think about it. You know, I think I need to go home and talk to John about it. Thank you for presenting that. And, you know, we really want to give this a big, important decision for us. We really want to think through it. If they give you any of that, you need to find out why. Because they're either not telling you what's going on in their heart of hearts. There's something else there why they want to think about it. we got to talk about it. So here's what you need to do. Okay? Very common objection. A couple of key ways to handle it. Okay? First, you need to clarify to ensure understanding. Hear me on this, guys. Some of the best wording you can come up with the phraseology is right here. You ready? I'm not sure I understand. One of the best things you can say fits almost anything. Uh, it's too expensive. I'm not sure I understand. I want to go home and think about it. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Well, when they say, I want to think about it, and you say, I'm not sure I understand, and you pause, they'll usually tell you. My favorite is, how do you mean? When you say, how do you mean, it's a great way to get them to tell you what's on their mind. I'm not, you know, I want to go home and think about it. How do you mean? Well, you know, this was just a little bit more expensive than what we thought it was going to be. Well, 
They really didn't want to go home and think about it. What they just told you is it's too expensive. So they got to the next objection, which we're going to get into on the, on the next slide. But you need to clarify this. And the best way is by asking one of these two questions. Once you've done that, once they say, I'm not sure I understand, they go, well, it's a really important decision. I don't like to make decisions overnight. And I really want to work, walk through the pros and cons of treatment or whatever they might say. You see, then at that point, you support it. You go, okay, man, I completely understand. It's a really important decision. I get that. Let me ask you this, uh, Mrs. Jones. Other than going through the pros and cons and kind of walking through those things, is there anything else that, that, that would be kind of keeping you from wanting to move forward? Now, what I'm doing there is I'm clarifying the objections. Are there, is there anything else or is that the only thing? And if they go, no, that's pretty much it. At that point, you can do one of a couple things. Let me move this up here. You can, if it's a misunderstanding, let's say they come back and go, I want to think about it. You clarify it and they say, well, it just, I just don't think that Susie uh, needs, and they come up with some misunderstanding. It's, it's something that they misunderstood what you said. And it, you pick, it doesn't matter what that is, but it's a misunderstanding. That's easy to fix. You know, they say, oh, you know, really didn't think she'd be in braces for, for, you know, 34 months. And that's a lot longer. You say, oh, so, so your concern is that the treatment's too long? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because actually I said 24 months, not 34 months. So, so it's actually less than what you, oh, okay. I know that's a silly example, guys, but that's a misunderstanding. And there could be others. There could be all kinds of misunderstandings, but you've got to try to pull this out of them by asking, how do you mean? If it's skepticism, okay, when people are skeptical, the only way to make them uh, get around that is by providing proof. We don't get a whole lot of skepticism in this case. We get a lot of people that trust what we're saying. But if they don't believe it or they're not sure how it works or they don't, you know, they say, eh, you know, I'm not so sure I, I, I buy into that. At that point, you need to say, you ready for this? How do you mean? <laughs> and then they, you, again, see how that works? Then they say, well, you said this but I'm just not so sure that I buy that. And again, hey, I completely understand. You know, it seems too good to be true that we could have this, this beautiful of a smile done in this short period of time. But the last four cases in which we've used Propel, this is what we have found. And here's here are the cases themselves. You can see we started here. Normally a case, and you might have pro provide them with evidence. And so that's something to do there. A drawback is something you cannot overcome. So if they come back with on, on this, I want to think about it, and you find out what they want to think about is, you know, it's just they just really didn't think they were going to have to have teeth extracted. OK, and it's a drawback. Let's just say in this particular case, there's no way around it. That's absolutely the only way to treat the case. Let's just say that's how doctors going to do it. And that doctors can't expand enough to make it work. He's going to have to extract teeth. At that point, what you want to do, acknowledge the drawback, say, listen, Mom, I understand, taking teeth out, nobody gets excited about that, ever. But let's walk back through everything else we kind of talked about in terms of making this smile beautiful. We both agreed, and you agreed, that when Doctor said he could treat Susie and give her this gorgeous smile, you liked the fact that, and you go through all the things they agreed to, you liked the fact that we could do it in 18 or 24 months, you liked the fact that we could use you know, state-of-the-art technology like SureSmile or scanning technology. Start adding up all the things that they liked and the, 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 the treatment modality is the benefit saying, look, she's going to have a beautiful smile. You agreed that she thought that was really important. You agreed that, that by having her occlusion the way it's supposed to be, which is going to help make her, you know, chew better and, and, and function better, whatever. You agreed all those things were really important. Based on all that, do you think it, that, that all those positives outweigh the fact that, unfortunately, we're going to have to take a couple of teeth out? That's how you handle a drawback. And they're going to say one of two things. You know what? Now that you put it that way, yeah, it, it does make sense. You know, those things do outweigh the fact that, you know, we're going to have to take a couple of teeth. You know what? When I was a kid, I had to have my teeth taken out. Or I, my husband did or whatever. They might start, you know, agreeing with you here, okay? But you can't overcome a drawback. There's just no way to, you can't eliminate it is what I'm saying. It's there. You know, I want purple. Yours comes in yellow. I want, you know, one that's, uh, you know, 40 inches tall. Mine's 26 inches tall. 
whatever it is we're buying, there's certain things about a product that our service that are drawbacks. Some of those things we can overcome. Some of those things we can overcome uh, either by changing you know, the treatment options or, or whatever, but a true drawback like we have to take teeth out and there's no other option. You just have to try to overcome it. And they're going to say one of two things. Yes, that makes sense or nope, it doesn't. And at that point, you're probably not going to be able to move forward with the patient. So I hope that makes sense. So that's how I, I would handle I want to think about it. I need to talk to by blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because I think Lynn did a great, great job. And I saw another treatment coordinator recently do the very same thing. I want to talk to my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, my dog, my fish, my neighborhood association, whatever. Acknowledge it. Hey, completely understand. Makes sense that you'd want to do that. We get it. We expect that you would want to do that. Here's the thing. We have our next appointment where we could actually put braces on would be the, just like Lynn did it. If you notice that with Lynn, super smooth. And what I found, I just observed another a TC on the East Coast, did the very same thing. And guess what? Patients schedule the time. So the good news is the majority of the time when they do that, they're going to come back and start. But we're taking that away from them as a worry. Hey, let's, we get that. You know, we, and we, we understand you want to do that and then go ahead and schedule Something else that you can do is send a video email describing the appointment recap. And I have doctors that will that will use a phone uh, or an iPad to tape a little uh, two or three minute video clip. They'll tell the patient's mom, hey, listen, when you go home tonight, I get that you want to talk about it. Uh, by tomorrow, you're going to have a quick recap from doctor about today's appointment and what he found. Uh, and we'll send that right to you. That way you're not explaining this by yourself to, to John. And you'll have a recap of today's appointment. We'll get that out to you tomorrow. And you'll have that to review. Does that make sense? Oh, that'd be great. And it gives you something to follow up on. Okay. But in the meantime, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and schedule the next date because we're filling up and we have, and then you go right back to Lynn's scheduling the appointment. Best way to handle it. Okay. So don't make a bigger deal about this than it needs to be. Go ahead and schedule the next appointment. Odds are in our business, they're coming back. They may not, but if you follow this step, I tell you, I guarantee they won't come back if you don't schedule the time. You're going to significantly increase the chance that they're not coming. Okay? Big one here. Last one. It's too expensive. This one comes up. Saw it last week on an observation. And I know this one can be a difficult one to work with and deal with because our, our treatment isn't inexpensive. It is a fairly decent investment for most people, but it's affordable. And the way we do things in orthodontics, we make it as affordable as it can come. Payments and zero interest and all that other kind of stuff. So I want to get into this, okay? Here's what we do. Somebody says, it's too expensive. Very common. Couple key ways to handle it, okay? Clarify to ensure. This is critical here. Hear me on this. Critical. How do you mean and stop? They're going to say one of two things or three things. Man, I just didn't expect the payments were going to be this high. They're going to say, oh, man, that's a lot more down payment than I thought I was going to have to come up with. They're going to clarify this for you, okay? Determine if there's anything else, Mrs. Jones, other than affordability of the treatment. Is there anything else that would keep you from wanting to, to go ahead and get these braces for Susie? And she's going to go, no, that, that's it. Say, well, let's talk about that. You said that the that the monthly payment was was higher than than you were expecting. What were, did you have in mind? I like to ask because if she says five dollars a month and we're at two twenty a month, well, you know what? We're not going to get there. If she says one seventy five a month and we're at two twenty, we might be able to get there. We might, are, are close. So I think it's good to try to get an idea from them what they were thinking. So I like to handle it by determining if we can, you know, with the payment, if we can structure it to reduce the monthly payment. Several ways to do it. We can extend the term or we can increase the down payment, right? Those are a couple things we can do. Most of you are familiar with that. But you've got to specifically find out what they mean by too expensive, okay? Down payment adjustments could be another way. If they're the down payment's too high, you know, they can't come up with that much, maybe you can sp split the down payment into, into thirds. Maybe you can reduce the down payment from a thousand to five hundred or seven fifty or from seven fifty to five hundred and, and they can pay it over the next couple months or whatever. Look, guys, in the majority of your practices, we don't have major collection problems. 
most people are going, 90% of your patients are going to pay you on time. And then out of that other 10, you might have to work on a few to get them, but most of you are going to have, you know, 95% of your patients pay out, okay, even if there's some hiccups. So let's get aggressive. Let's be flexible. Uh, not only down payment adjustments and stretching term, but what about a graduated payment? Uh, I was in a practice the other day where someone had just bought a house, and they were really worried about the payments. And the payments, I think, were like $189 a month. And she's like, man, you know, wow, I, it's more than I was thinking. She was thinking, you know, more like $100 a month would be affordable right now. Okay? Well, here's my question. Why couldn't we say, if, if, if we're willing to take the chance, say, listen, Mom, I know things are going to be a little tight on you because you just bought this house and you're really trying to get your arms around how how expenses are going to lay out. Why don't we do this? Why don't we schedule this where the first six months are at $100 a month, then the next six months we'll set at $200 a month, and then the remaining 12 months we'll set at $250 a month or whatever. Why not do that? Why not get them started? What's the risk? You know, if you get them in there and you get them started, they're coming. So I, that is something I'm sure most of you aren't doing. If it was my practice, I would definitely have it as an option. So I wanted to, to give you guys this webinar to talk about objections. You guys need to get really, really good at this. Next month, we're going to be talking about how to present payments and what that looks like. We'll, we'll probably go back to Lynn's video again on kind of what she talks about, you know, maybe cut out a little section from that and then talk about how to present payments and what that kind of looks like. So have a great rest of your June, and I look forward to talking to you guys in July. Uh, we'll talk again soon. It's been Gary Johnson with the Wild Institute. Thank you so much.